What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and today I'm back with yet another super niche video. If you came looking for what's in the title, I'm going to show you exactly that in today's video. I'm going to show you how you can record using OBS and record only the audio and not the video. Why exactly would you want this? Well, a friend of mine is streaming to YouTube, doesn't have much hard disk space, and would much rather download a stream later and combine it with audio or download bits of a stream and combine it with audio on his PC. Because he records in multiple tracks like I do with the desktop audio, Discord, Skype, etc. And then the microphone audio down here, it makes it really easy to jump to different parts in a video editing software like Premiere Pro. So before we get too deep into this video, I do need to explain a couple of things. This video is not showing you how to record only audio using OBS Studio, as that's quite literally impossible. You have to record some sort of a video output in order for it to work. What I'm going to do in this video is show you how to record in an incredibly low quality video with incredibly high quality audio so that later on in your editing software of choice, you can simply remove the video track and you'll have one or more audio tracks that you can edit and use as normal. I record video with my desktop audio, Skype, Discord, etc., and my own microphone audio in three different audio tracks in my output. Basically, what I'll be doing in this video is completely making my video itself really terrible, really low quality, really low bitrate and resolution so that the video file that I get is basically just the audio. This video is long because I spent a lot of time explaining what I'm doing and why, but before we get there, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it so that you don't have to sit through this entire video. Opening up OBS Studio, then Advanced Audio Properties, you can see that all of my audio outputs go to one for my stream. We won't be touching the stream encoder at all, so you can still stream at maximum quality. 2, 3, and 4 each have their own separate output dedicated to them, so desktop audio, desktop audio 2, and microphone go to 2, 3, and 4 respectively. Opening up at the settings, output, changing the mode to advanced, and then going to the recording tab, we'll copy these settings over here. Custom output, FFmpeg instead of standard, output to file, choose a file location, then we can choose a container format, be it MP4 or Matroska for MKV. While they do have audio only formats in here, they don't seem to record at all and the video only codecs obviously only support video. Choosing MP4, we can set the video bitrate to 1 kilobit per second, ignore the keyframe interval and set our rescaled output to 34 by 32 pixels, the smallest possible with H.264 as far as I know which is way smaller than what they offer here. Then video encoder, you can leave as either H.264 NVENC for NVENC or something like LibX264 for CPU encoding. Because we have such a low quality video output, this doesn't really matter. Then audio down here is the important bit. I record tracks two, three, and four, desktop audio two, and my microphone. Track number one has all of them combined and is used on the streaming section over here, which can still be maximum quality as it always has been. Audio encoder, you can choose AAC, the default MP4 audio codec, or something like AC3, so you can raise the kilobit limit to something like 620. Each one of these encoders has a different limit and different limitations inside of editing software. AC3, for example, only supports one audio track inside of Premiere Pro, as if I open up the video file in VLC, all three of them will be playable. Choosing AAC, 320 kilobits per second, apply, OK, and starting a recording, you can see us recording desktop audio, nothing coming through Skype or Discord, and my microphone audio down here. Stopping the recording, opening up my videos folder, you can see it over here. 540 kilobytes, really terrible quality video, but if I right click, audio, audio track, you can see track one, two, and three. These are all really high quality. Checking something like media info, you can see the video has a bitrate of just a mere 5.6 kilobits per second. Then we have audio one, AAC with 320 max at an average of 288 kilobits per second. Audio two, it didn't record much, but it has a max of 320 kilobits per second. And audio three, 320 max again, and 241 average. Opening up Premiere Pro, Ignoring the video that I'm currently editing, which is this one over here, and importing our new video, we'll make a new sequence, and you can see our three audio tracks. Unlinking it, deleting the video itself, we basically have just the audio recording, which is what we were aiming to do from the beginning. Raising the volume on my desktop sound, you can see the waveform for everything here. Desktop audio with music playing, and my microphone at the very bottom. Playing it, it works exactly as you'd expect, really high quality, and it's basically just an audio file output for OBS Studio, but of course we have to have some kind of a video. And that's exactly what this video shows you. 
This video is rather long as I do quite a bit of experimenting and this took five minutes to explain in its entirety. So with that out of the way, if you're curious about what exactly the limitations are and some other things, you'll see them later in this video. Some of these are audio only, some of them are video only, and the ones without brackets next to them are both audio and video. So you may be expecting, I'll pick Matroska being MKV file formats, and I'll pick the audio only one, so it'll only record the audio. You'll select the correct tracks, select the correct bitrate, and the nice thing about here is the maximum isn't 300 and something, you can set it to say 512 or anywhere higher than that if you wanted. You could go to quite insane numbers here in the audio bitrate, and you can even choose a specific audio encoder. But leaving everything as default, you can see that the video encoder is currently disabled as we're recording to an audio only format. Clicking apply, OK, and starting the recording, you may see something like this. Fail to open audio codec, invalid argument. Let's quickly try and drop the audio quality, see if that fixes it. And it does. So now I'm recording the audio at 320 kilobits per second. If I go ahead and open up my videos folder, you'll see a file over here. Refreshing, you can see the file size is staying at 12.6 kilobytes and it's not going anywhere. If I stop my recording, you'll see it doesn't stop properly. And after completely ending my recording by clicking stop recording once again, you'll see that the file size hasn't changed. The video is actually unreadable. What we can do is head back to settings, output, recording, and we can change the container format to something like MP4. And we can simply go video encoder and choose disable encoder. But if we try it here, start recording, you'll see that we'll end up with another empty file. Why doesn't this work? I have no idea. But let's stop the recording twice. Go back to settings, output, recording, and we'll try something a bit different. What we'll do is we'll leave the video encoder as say NVENC, and we'll change the video bitrate down to zero. Simply hitting apply, okay, and starting another recording, you'll see another video file. But this time, refreshing the folder, you can see that this file is incrementally getting bigger each time that I do it. This means that it's recording properly as you'd expect, but we're recording with a video bitrate of zero kilobytes per second. Stop recording, opening up the video file, you can see that we see our desktop over here and it looks rather normal. And if we right click audio, audio tracks, you can see track one, two, and three here as you'd expect. Having a look at the media info, you can see that the video bitrate is one megabit per second with a maximum of 11. So this isn't what we chose. Settings, output, recording, you can see that it's completely ignoring the video bitrate over here. Weird. Let's go ahead and change the video bitrate to say one kilobit per second. Apply, okay, start recording, and we'll see what happens this time. This time, you can see that the file is getting bigger, but incredibly slowly. Why is this? Well, we're actually recording just the audio, and the video is coming in at an incredibly small one kilobit per second, meaning that we're recording just the audio. Stopping our recording, Opening it up, you can see that the video looks absolutely terrible, but all three of our audio tracks are there and at the highest quality. Using something like Media Info, we can have a look at the video codec itself, and as you can see, bitrate 37.9 kilobits per second, maximum bitrate 2.9 thousand bits per second, so 2.9 kilobits per second, which is great. That seems to be the minimum. While we are recording the video, it is at an incredibly low rate. We can head back to output, recording, and we can change some of the settings here. Rescale the output to say 426 by 240, but maybe this is a bit high. So you may expect to change this to say one by one, but if we do that and start recording, you'll see we have an error. What's the lowest that we can go with this? Well, output recording, the absolute smallest that I've been able to get this is 33 by 32. Hitting apply, okay and starting our recording, you can see we're recording here yet again. This video file is absolutely tiny as it's recording only our audio. If we stop the recording, you can see it's over here. Opening it up, it looks absolutely terrible as you'd expect, but we have all of our audio tracks. If I were to set it to say 32 by 32, start recording, you can see it doesn't work at all. So the smallest I've got it is 33 by 32. Of course, you can play around with this. Anyways, once you've figured that out and tuned it to your liking, you're now basically recording a video that's absolutely pointless and tiny, as well as audio at perfect normal quality. Then afterwards, you can either remove the video using something like FFmpeg, or just share it as is, as an audio-only copy. When you import it into something like Premiere Pro, you can simply delete the video track, which I'll show you in just a moment. 
If we head back to the output section, recording, you may wonder why we don't just use the standard output over here and change the settings. Well, we can rescale the output to 33 by 32 and change the bitrate to say one. But if we click down, you can see it resets to whatever it was before. Scrolling down here to turn it down to the minimum, we can see the smallest is 50 kilobits per second. If you're happy with this, you can hit OK and start recording as such. But OBS might crash out like that unexpectedly. Using FFmpeg doesn't leave me with this issue. If you wanted to get a bit crazy, we can do that. Heading back to settings, output, recording, we can change our audio codec from something like AAC to something else as AAC has the maximum bitrate of 320 kilobits per second. If we have a look at the options over here and we pick something like AC3, doing a quick Google search, we can see the maximum supported is 640 kilobits per second. So let's try that. Apply, okay, start recording. This time, having a look over here, we have our same video track, but it's recording quite a bit faster using quite a bit more space, which is exactly what we expected. Let me just play some music so you can see that on our timeline as well. And going ahead and stopping our recording, we can see it over here once again, terrible video, but we have all of our audio tracks inside of it. Using media info, scrolling down, we can see the video has basically nothing in it. Audio, AC3, Dolby Digital, 640 kilobits per second, constant. Same with audio two and audio three. Opening up Premiere Pro, I should be able to import this format. And it looks like we are, but it seems like it's only imported with one audio track, even though if we have a look at the actual file itself inside of something like VLC, we can see multiple audio tracks that we can select from over here. So of course you'll have to pick the right encoder for the right software that you're using to see that it works properly. With that quick demonstration out of the way, you can see that this is quite flexible and you can adjust it and play with it as you see fit. This has been a really quick video on how to get an audio only recording or well as close to it as you can with OBS Studio. Now, because we didn't actually touch the streaming section of it, you can stream at maximum normal quality while having a really high quality audio recording on your PC with different audio tracks that you can combine later on if you ever needed to. The recording on your PC should be really tiny compared to the really big high quality video stream that you're sending out to the internet. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name is Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.